Thank you, Lisa. Welcome, everybody. So this is part two. And uh, I love this because I had an implant patient, and today we've done nine implants on them. And how do you maintain an implant patient with what I call a mixed dentition? How do you do that? He's had a history of perio, nine extractions. And do you really not put someone on a protective maintenance plan? And the answer is absolutely. And we mandate it with perio protect. So I'm uh, absolutely excited to be here tonight. And we're going to talk about all these wonderful advancements in part two of this course. You know, so I travel around this country and I do about 35 seminars a year. And when I talk about perio in a restorative setting, I get this look about perio protect. You know, the look of dentists is kind of like this look, perio what? And, and the truth is, is that perio is such a huge part of the foundation of what we all do. So then I ask my audiences, you know, how do you treat all of those patients in your practice whose periodontal issues really never get better. They're still bleeding on probing. They're just not getting better. And I call those oftentimes refractory patients. Well, what about the patients who don't want surgery or they don't want another surgery? Or they're just simply not getting better with all the 4910s and perial maintenances that you're doing every three months or dropping some arrest in it. What do you do with all these? And the dentist will look up at me and they'll just go, my team keeps cleaning their teeth and keeps hoping. They keep hoping. And, and they just kind of laugh at the whole thing because I've been there. So over the past two plus years going on three, I have to tell you that the uses of Perio Protect continue to grow in my practice. And, and I honestly don't know how a practice could not have this in their practice. So tonight, I'm going to talk about Mike and Tom. They had sequential therapy, laser therapy, surgeries, and they still have bleeding on probing, and they have inflammation. And they have good hygiene, but they have either generalized refractory disease or localized refractory disease. What do you do for these patients? And what do you do for patients who come in with a mouthful of problems like Abdel? I'll show you what we do or patients who have ongoing implant issues like Jane, patients with medical histories that want to reduce their oral inflammation like Sid, patients who want to bleach their teeth and have been too sensitive. How about high caries risk patients? My geriatric patients, xerostomia patients. We'll talk about Janina tonight. Oral cancer patients with radiation ports. I'm at the University of Chicago. I have an office that's literally just adjacent to the university. Can we handle all of their head and neck cancer patients in two other hospitals? They just like our, our, our treatment, what, what we offer in prevention. So why do we have to think inside the pocket? And I'm going to say you're thinking inside the pocket, but outside the box. So let me just talk briefly about Perio Protect. In my first seminar, I talked about treating the pockets as wounds. If you didn't take my first seminar, which is totally understandable, these are hard to get to at night, you're going to listen to Tanya and her team at perioprotect.com. They're far better than I am at knowing what this is. But that's what you want to take. Because really, what Dwayne Keller has really talked about for all these years is we're trying to treat pockets as wounds. It's an open wound. So now we're going to take a low dose hydrogen peroxide. And as it breaks down, it breaks down to oxygen and water. It's really about how we customize this device, an, F an FDA patented device that has certain gasket seals, which I'm going to show you, that hold the gel in place. It only takes 10 or 15 minutes a day. And the oxygenation effect per the studies can go as deeply as nine millimeters inside the pocket. Incredible. So let's talk about incredible. Let's talk about Tom. Tom's just not a happy guy. I love my Tom, but that's Tom smiling. 
and he was referred to me to take care of him. And I, I have to tell you, I, I, I will tell you, I did all his restorative work. He came in with history of periodontal disease. And he still had bleeding and probing in all four quadrants and active disease. Now, I'm going to show you what a committed patient Tom is. This is my ledger. The white in the middle is his name, his last name. So I took it out for HIPAA so I don't get sued. And But Tom, Tom is great. He's one of my favorite patients. Now, when you look at this, I started on him in 08. And you look at this. And you can see all the things that he's done, bone grafts, guided tissue, laser-assisted periotherapy, localized antimicrobials, adjunctive testing, laser-assisted perio. And we go on. I made him a night guard. We did more local whatever. We did all this stuff. We even, you know, we tested him for microbes. That's the collection of microbial collection. We did everything. Year after year after a year it's crazy what we do with our patients at another year then we put them on my dental plan which is our in-office dental plan which you can see here more assisted more this more that and i'm going to tell you he never got really that much better so then we put him on two things oracare i love this chlorine dioxide but even more importantly we put him on perio trace which is tonight's subject so in 2015, we changed his course of treatment. Why? So here's our Dentrix probings. His probings were okay. It's got a lot of clinical attachment loss. Got some probings here. This is his maxilla, but lots of bleeding points. Here's his mandible. Isolated posterior bleeding points. So what do you do for this patient? They come in at recall. The dentist walks into the room. The hygienist says, Tom's doing his best. He uses everything we recommend that he's not getting better. So what do you do in your office? What do you do? This isn't the initial exam, which is up here. It's here. So at that point, my hygienist will give him a PerioProtect brochure we have a couple of animations for them, and that's where we present Perio Protect. Why? Because they're not getting better. It's as simple as that. So what happens at that appointment? Routinely, we check our schedule. We have one of our floating assistants, usually one. If she's available, we're gonna book the patient right then and there, same day service, to do Perio Protect impressions, which I'll show you in a little while. So we take the impressions that day, patient's into it, I'm into it, hygienist is into it, the whole team's into it. We tell them it's gonna take two to three weeks to start their, get their trays. My assistant delivers their trays, and we tell the patient to wear their trays two times a day. It's gonna take 10 or 15 minutes per wearing, and that's their, this is during active treatment. So now let's, let's look at it this way. They've come in, the hygienist did their normal 4910. We took impressions. We're gonna deliver their trays two weeks later and we're gonna begin again active therapy. But they've been wearing the trays. As a result, since they've been wearing the trays for a couple of weeks, they're already getting better. It's amazing how much better they're getting. We complete our therapy and we evaluate six weeks later. What evaluation means is we wanna look at their hygiene. We do not probe. We do not probe for three to six months because the junctional epithelium, connective, epi connective attachment, we don't want to bother that. So we don't probe, usually for three to six months. So what do we do? We may take a probe and just walk in inside the pocket to see if there's bleeding. Okay, that's it. There's your refractory appointment right then and there. That's all you have to know tonight. So what's the process of taking an impression? So we use Kettenbox putty fast. We use their, I'm sorry, their putty, which is a regular set. And then we use a fast set wash. Okay, so what does that mean? Sometimes a little border molding. My assistant does this. She'll take obviously one scoop of each of the putty, mix it for 45 seconds, place it in the tray. 
I don't need the palate. Then she'll just inject a little Panasil Fast Set Extra Light. That's it. So they mix the putty for 45 seconds, load it in the tray, put a little Fast Set over it just like this. You're going to love these impressions. And bam, three minutes later, we're taking it out. And that's what it looks like. And what you want to do is you want to capture the gingival cuffs around all the teeth. Perfect Invisalign impression, but far better. Just really amazing. So two to three weeks later, the trays come in. My assistant delivers the trays, not my hygienist. My assistant delivers the trays. She knows exactly how to look at them because they were all, they all took the Perio Protect online training, which if you are on this course tonight, it's free. It's normally whatever. It's free because you're on tonight's course. And I can't tell you, have lunch with your team, go take the online training and listen to Tanya or Doug and their team. They're just the greatest people. So here's your instructions we give to a patient. We tell them you're going to wear this 10 minutes a day in maintenance or two to three times a day before and during treatment. And they're into this. They get into this. What's 10 minutes a day? It's nothing, and I'll tell you more. Most patients during maintenance wear them when they take a shower. So here's what I tell them. Get up in the morning, go to the bathroom, load your tray, get in the shower. Get out of the shower, rinse your trays in the shower, brush your teeth. Okay, what's more than that? It's that simple. It's that simple. And they love the freshness of their breath. They feel the freshness, and you know they're compliant. Because when they come in, you see there's very limited bleeding on probing, and they're ordering or reordering the perio gel. So here's Tom with my dental assistant, just trying in the upper and lower trays. Nice tori. After trying in the trays, the next step is you take out the trays, and my assistant shows them how to place the material. But this is hard. You cut the nozzle off of the perio gel and you inject a little thin strip, very little strip throughout. You don't want to fill a tray up. It's too much. Just a thin strip. The assistant examines the trays and we put them in the patient's mouth. So they've tried them in and now we put them in the patient's mouth for 10 minutes so they understand what 10 minutes is. We do not let them leave until we take it out after 10 minutes, rinse out the trays, and say, bye-bye. That's it. Dentist involvement, walking in and saying hello to the patient. Here's Tom at his three-month recall. First off, you can note the tissue tone, great tissue tone around some, I'd say some composites that are starting to stain a little bit that are a few years old. I know you never see them. They're my work. And look at the tissue tone, and look at how his teeth are beginning to bleach. Now, this is going to happen. It's, it's a low-dose hydrogen peroxide, but your teeth are going to bleach. Absolutely, they'll bleach. Just telling you ahead of time. So here's his white right quadrant, bleeding and probing only on the margin. I had to refine the margin. I love this. It's telling me my dentistry isn't good. Look at the tissue response of oxygenation. Oxygen going into the pocket dealing with those anaerobic bacteria. So this was Tom before, and you have far less bleeding. I have two bleeding points. One's around a zirconia crown, one's around a composite. I know. I had to repolish the zirconia crown. After finishing it, I used some zirconia polishers because it's telling me I've got to make them better. My margins. <laughs> He immediately could feel the difference in the first week. Now, this is Tom. And what happened with Tom is he continued to have a, a few bleeding areas. So what we learned, what I've learned working with Tanya, Doug, and Kelsey, and Candy, and they're just a wonderful team, is how do we go beyond? So they work with a pharmacy called the Dakota Pharmacy, which I'll show you on the next slide. And we use the vibromycin syrup. Instead of arrested, for 35 bucks, we get a syrup. I'll show you the whole thing. And it acts as an anti-inflammatory component within the pocket. 
So the team will tell you how to get Dakota Pharmacy prescriptions, and you order one bottle. It's plenty. It's 35 bucks. We ship it to the patient. Patient comes into the office, and we show them how to mix it. That's it. Comes in a bottle, and it has like, you know, it's like the old medicine bottles. So what you do is you still, the patient still puts the peroxide in first. And then what they do is they take the eyedropper, which is how you put the vibromycin in, and you put one drop here, one drop here, and one drop here. And then the vibromycin is mixed with the gel. And we use this for two weeks to treat the bleeding pockets. So for the patients who don't come in perfect, this is what we're doing now. Been doing this for two years. And just spread the vibromycin throughout. And, and I'm telling you, this company is very with it. They're, they're very responsive to questions. They've taught me so much, and they're just wonderful people. So here's Tom at Recall. Look how white his teeth are. He's 68 years old. Look at that tissue. I should have that good tissue. I mean, I wish all my patients had this good tissue. He uses the tree trays every day, 10 or 15 minutes. Last hygiene visit, he had one bleeding on probing pocket, and he was disappointed. Cracks me up. He's on our dental plan, which is our in-office dental plan, which I even talked about last time. So everybody wants to know money. We charge at this point $375, and we offer one gel treatment, one gel with the kit. So it's $750 with one gel, and my patients get it at 15% off if they're on our university dental plan. And look, you can charge whatever you want. The cost is about $100 per tray. And honestly, you know, you put 100 patients a year on this, you're making 25 or 30,000 bucks, pro you're just doing fine financially. But what happens is, is they're coming in and bringing this in on recall. So here's Tania, one of my lovely hygienists. This is our favorite varnish of late. It's Voco's salted caramel varnish. It's as delicious as it sounds. And the patients bring their trays with them every hygiene visit, and we tell them they have to wear them within 24 hours after the recall visit because the biofilm is going to be reaccumulating. So I want them wearing it the next morning for sure. So here's Tom. We really don't have time to listen to Tom. It'll be on the site. But he's just a happy guy. So much more to talk about. So digital scanning. I'm totally into it. I do it every day, three patients today. And it's really the evolution of where we're going. So how do you get accurate perioprotect impressions on a patient with large tori who's a gagger? Okay, double whammy. Gagger, large tori. So here's Sid. Sydney just had aorta, aorta valve replacement. She's on six months recall, and we just moved her to four month recall because she's just not getting better. She has bleeding on probing in four quads. She has isolated five to seven millimeter pockets. And at first she didn't want to go more than every six months because of insurance. Well, that's just not gonna bite it now that she's had aorta valve replacement. You'll see why. She does power brushes with the Oral-B, she flosses, and she's frustrated because she's not getting better. Her doctor said even one of them told her about periodontal disease and inflammation. Oh, my God, a cardiologist who really understands this. She denies clenching or grinding, and she won't sleep in any appliance, which I laugh at, which I'll show you. Her posterior dentistry is all in monolithic zirconia crowns because she's fractured so many PFMs. So here she is. If you look at the upper right, which is up here, multiple bleeding sites, not really bad pockets, some fours and fives. We go to the upper left, more bleeding pockets, more fives. We go to the lower left, more bleeding pockets, and look at the lower right. If you add it up, there's like 40 bleeding pockets. That's a lot of bleeding pockets. And she's power brushing and flossing and not getting better. It's a refractory patient, everybody. 
And this is when Perio Protect is, a, is an absolute essential. She has some isolated areas of bone loss. There's marginal ridge discrepancy. The teeth came in malaligned fine. She's got some bone loss here. And when you look at her probings, that's where her deepest probings are, lower first molars. So Sydney hates impressions. She's a big, big gagger. And she really wasn't up for this. And I told her, look, let me take digital impressions on you. So enter the world of digital scanning. In my practice, I've used 3Ms and Itero. And where Itero is today, it's all I use pretty much. And I know there's some great scanning systems out there like Trios and many others. Um, and I absolutely will just say, this is not trying to be a digital scanning course, but man, I love this. And Itero has just launched how I can scan full arches. And I don't even scan it. My assistants scan it. So I'll take a look. So these are two full arches that my assistant scanned. Let's take closer looks. They scan it in records. I use this for all my new patient exams. I walk into the room and the patients are iteroed before I walk in. So these are the extent of them. This is the color view. And now I can explain why she has a chipped tooth. Look at the wear. Let's show you more. Look at the wear, and I try to show them the wear here, all the way here to the bicuspid. These are all zirconia monolithic crowns because she's fractured all her porcelain. Look at the incisal wear. I, I tell you, this is where Itero and other systems are just showing that there's so much more than just taking an impression. So I show the patient this, look at her wear. How can you not believe that you're grinding your teeth? And now what Itero is doing is they're actually going to be able to take the data and you scan them every year and they'll show you how much tooth wear or a fraction or recession there is. And there's even more coming from Itero later this year. It's just amazing where digital scanning is coming from. So what happens? You digitally scan them. You, you make some 3D printed models. I don't make them in my office. I don't need to. The lab does this. So the lab prints them. And what does the lab do then? The lab then takes impressions of the model. They pour up the model in stone. Then they score the stone to create the gasket lining, which is imperative in Perio Protect. Normally, my trays cost 90 bucks. They're 125 here. So I charge the patient if I'm digitally scanning them $60 more because I'm going to get a, lot, a higher lab bill. Money's money. And the patients gladly paid the 60 bucks so we don't gag them. The fit, this is on the model. And you don't get the stone model. You get the 3D printed model. This, and the fit, even though you see a gap here, the gap isn't there in the stone, but you just don't see the stone. Here's the gasket seal. Let's take another look. Here's the gasket seal. One more look. So here's your seal. And this is what keeps the peroxide gel in its place. It's the key. So as oxygen releases inside this gasket seal inside the tray as oxygen releases it becomes pressurized as it becomes pressurized it's forced deeper into the pocket up to nine millimeters so you know i know a lot of you are thinking i'll just do a suck down it's not the same it's not the same material it's not the same gasket so i'm going to tell everybody you spend the 90 bucks for this fda clear device and you treat the disease the right way my assistant tries them in, and this is her first 10 minutes. After the try-in, she'll load the gel. We watch the timer. We rinse these out, and off we send the patient. Two cases thus far. So let's talk about modern diagnostics with contemporary hygiene. So I'm a general dentist. And this was a 35-year-old cab driver who came into my office named Abdel. 
His chief complaint is my wife hates my breath. His other chief complaint, my wife hasn't kissed me in seven months. He said hello and I wanted to pass out. He said multiple dental opinions and we took his FMX. It's interesting. One dentist downtown Chicago said you have to pull your first molars, all of them. Seriously. Okay, I know this one's not good, but they wanted to pull this one, this one, and this one. Are you kidding me? And make and put five implants in one replacing this tooth. Amazing. One other office never probed them. Just taking closer looks at them. You look at all this subgingival tartar, and this is a hygienist dream. So what do we do for a patient like this? His initial exam, he comes in, and we're now evaluating his proximals. He has absolutely no decay on the x-rays, just lots of tartar. But what we do that's very different and is really gaining traction is we offer non uh, what I call uh, radiographic examinations, non-explorer radio, non-explorer examinations. So this is his charting, and this is carry view from Dexis, and this is Spectra. This is contemporary diagnostics in my office. I, I think traditional dentistry is a joke in many ways. I think we're way too aggressive, and I think we're guessing all the time. So here are three teeth. The three teeth, no sticks. The literature says if something doesn't stick, you don't do anything. It's ridiculous. This is with Spectra. Spectra is showing me how deep the lesions are. Are they into dentin? Deep enamel, deep dentin. Or not. So versus an explorer guessing with a 50% accuracy, this is air techniques using fluorescence to allow me to understand what I'm getting into. My second diagnostic that we use in our office is carry view from Dexas. I mean, I, I wouldn't practice without either one of these. For 10 grand, your entire operatory is totally updated. There's, this is transillumination. Here's the light passing through, and there's no interproximal caries. So I know he's got occlusal caries, but no interproximal caries. Pocketing wise, <clears throat> weren't even measuring bleeding here. They weren't noted. He had over a hundred bleeding pockets in his mouth. A hundred. Fours, fives, and sixes and sevens around his mouth. I mean, it's unbelievable how many bleeding pockets. No wonder his wife wouldn't kiss him. His treatment plan. His treatment plan, and I'm going to explain this. We did a first debridement on him, which is what we would all call in dentistry a gross debridement. And the reason is he had so much tartar, we couldn't take impressions until we got the tartar off. We took impressions. Then he started on his trays. Two weeks later, we deliver the trays. He wears the trays for two weeks. And after two weeks, we start doing our scaling and planing. This was all his restorative work. So what we did here, so we're clear, his first visit, we did a gross debridement. We went over power brushing, oral hygiene, but we took perioprotect impressions. The second visit, we deliver the perioprotect impressions, or the trays, and we tell him he's got to wear them twice a day for 10 or 15 minutes for two weeks. After two weeks, he comes in and he has full mouth scaling and planing, and the tartar just flakes right off because of the peroxide interaction with the calculus. So there's your formula right here. New patient, get the tartar out of their mouth, the super gingival, take compressions, let them wear them for two weeks, and then you do full mouth debridement. What we'll do is we'll go in a fifth visit, and we'll go into the deepest pockets that were sevens and eights or nines and we'll re-debride those pockets one more time. And the patient is always using the Perio Protect. We use lasers all the time, but it's not part of this course. We'll reevaluate six weeks later. Again, no probing for three to six months. 
So this is what we do. There's 31 with Spectra from Air Techniques. I'm evaluating, as I remove the decay, it tells me where the decay is still in the tooth. As I continue to drill more and more, I, want to, I only want to drill the infected dent. It's based on the studies. So Spectra allows me, it guides me. So after really two visits of full mouth scaling and planing with lasers, while he's been on the Periotrex before, during, and maintenance, here's all his final restorations. I rebuilt number three with a large composite. He couldn't afford a crown, rebuilt the contact. And this is conservative dentistry. But the beauty is here. This is a guy who came in who couldn't kiss his wife, who thought he was going to bleed to death by probing. Look at this gum. Look at these gums. So, and somebody wanted to actually pull his first molars. So this is conservative dentistry, profitable dentistry, and this is what we're routinely seeing. When the patient comes back in, like Abdel does, he usually buys two perio gels, and we see him every three or four months. And the gold mine in dentistry is your recall system. I have four full-time hygienists. It's a million-dollar practice just in hygiene. Every hygienist is well-trained in all of these things, with carry view spectra, occlusion, it's amazing what hygienists do today. So let's just talk about some other cases. So here's Michael. Michael came in from another dentist and he had recurring issues involving his lower molars and he was just a nasty guy. He was just pissed all the time when he came in. He had isolated refractory disease. What does that mean? He had pockets in his lower molars. He had restorations placed, then the restoration, the teeth moved. We all hate this. And then he has open contacts because he's got active perio disease. You can see the bone loss that's, you know, these were restored. And I started seeing Mike, I think, in 15 or 14. And I'm not commenting on the negativity on the restorative work, but he was just mad because it had already been done twice. His pocketing on the maxillary, zip. He doesn't need a maxillary appliance. His lower, he had isolated sixes bleeding, isolated sixes and bleeding between his first molars. You all see this. So what do we do? We do periodic scaling and planings with 49 tens for his lower mandibular areas. We laser treated them. We activate the lasers, we deprive the pockets. You can even place a resin into the pockets. But again, he really wasn't getting any better. So what we decided to do was we would wait four weeks after using a resin. And we redid the crown on 19. And we redid the composite on 30. We took final impressions for Perio Protect. And he maintains himself on the Oral-B power brush. And I'm a huge Oral-B guy because of their attachments. Look at this baby. This is perfect interproximal to stimulate that gingival area and keep it healthy where a brush won't get to. I just don't see that in other power brushes. So we redid 19 and I cemented it with a temporary cement because if the contact opened, I wanted to get it off. This is what I use to take off my temporary crowns or permanent temporary crowns, whatever. This is from GC America. I love this. These are disposable yellow forcep cups. You just throw them away after use. They don't scratch your ceramic. For number 30, I recontoured this area. This was the pre-op. I recontoured the gold and made him a nice broad class two composite. I'm not going to crown that tooth. He doesn't need a crown. And so what do we do? We make him a lower tray and we tell him just put one drop of gel here and one drop of gel here. He doesn't need gel up here, just one gel each place. I mean, seriously, one tube of this is gonna last him like three to six months. His comments at his first visit were, and I love this, 
It's the first time I can remember food not getting stuck between my teeth and my gums aren't bleeding. We took off the crown after six months and we cemented it with my favorite cement on the market called Ceramer. Bioactive cement, remineral, it's just the greatest cement, so easy. Made by Doxa, sold through distribution. So simple, no resin in it. There's your Ceramer. Geriatric dentistry. 93-year-old patient, four maxillary teeth, two-dimensional x-rays. They just don't tell you the health of her gums. She's got four maxillary teeth. She's got great hygiene, but it's under a partial. And you know what partials do? They just trap food. So she had a couple isolated areas of bleeding, a couple on the bottom, but we could maintain the bottom. So we actually just wanted to make a tray for the top. So what did we do? We first put her on an Oral-B Power brush. I use the, uh, the, the, the Oral-B makes a great trial brush. So they actually can demo it in the office. We go over this with our patients. Step two was we treated her with lasers and traditional ultrasonics, and then we took impressions for Perio Protect. Here's her beautiful new partial that's 86 years old. But look how Perio Protect looks just like her partial. So we're going to put one drop in each of her four teeth. She's 93, totally with it. Look at her gums on the bottom. They look great. So this is how the tray fits on the top. Customized gasket seal to seal in the Perio Protect gel. Here's your bubbles from the Perio gel. Let it sit there 10 minutes. There's your blood. Initial try-in. Imagine all this gel turning to oxygen going right into that pocket. These are the hands of a 93-year-old, and she's just holding her tray, showing how she wears it, how she places it. A lot of times we have caregivers, and we tell the caregiver, this is how you put it in the patient's mouth, and we show the caregiver how to do this. We have many nursing home patients who use these. Here's Janina down here, amazing 93-year-old looking woman. I'm having a bad hair day, get over it. At night, she would load up her tray with MI paste. Yep, she loved the taste of vanilla and she'd actually sleep in it. I know, maybe not the right thing to do, but that's what she liked to do. She'd like to load up her tray and prevent tooth decay. Anita and Perio Protect. This was a great case. Great case. So she's a great patient. She shows up for four month recalls all the time, always doing laser decontamination. Not active treatment, just decontamination with lasers every four months. And we started using Perio Protect in her upper arch because she was breaking down in a couple areas. So I have a new hygienist who calls me into her office, into the operatory, and she wants to place a rest in the, between two and three. And I go, why? She goes, well, she's got bleeding on probing and the pocketing is getting worse. It's now sevens to nines, and she's on Perio Protect. Now, here's a key thing. If you're gonna place somebody on a rest in, you can't wear Perio Protect because the Perio Protect gel is gonna rinse away the arrest in. So I don't put a restin in on any Perio Protect patient. If they're gonna need a restin, we just get the Vibromycin gel for two weeks, just telling you. It's 35 bucks, it's less than the cost of one arrestin. So here's where this was unusual. And this is why everybody, we're all learning in dentistry. So I'm gonna focus here. Her pockets had gone from fives to seven to nines. Now, that just doesn't happen in Perio Protect. Here's your two-dimensional x-ray. So here's your x-ray, root proximity, root proximity. But you can see on a perfect bite wing, we've lost bone here. So you think, okay, that's the problem. Now, that's the problem with 2D x-rays. They're very limiting. So here's the note from the hygienist. She's using her perio trays, but she comes in for a localized therapy, had her FMX done, 
and she was going to place two to three in the area she's going to place a rest in. The recommended treatment was Dr. Graham wanted a 3D scan of number two taken after her cleaning. I didn't want them to place a rest in it because she was getting worse and she'd already had a rest in place. She was on Paraprotect and she was still getting worse. Here's what's happening. Here's her 2D picture. Look at this. I think there's bone here. This is the sagittal view, which means a cross-section view looking out to in. So here's tooth number three with a huge lesion going right up into this area. Is it an endoperio lesion? Do you do the endo? Now I look at the apical. This is the same CBCT comb beam, and I'm looking down. And as you scroll down, you can see the extent of where the bone is missing as you go down, which is an unbelievable tool. You'll never see this on a 2D x-ray. So I sent the images online to my endodontist. And she said to take out the tooth and save number two. The endodontist said she had a J lesion and there's probably a root fracture. So instead of trying to save this tooth and having a failed endo and losing more bone, we took out the tooth, placed the implant, and I'll just show you what we do today. Look at the tissue. This is a great compliant patient. We did lose some bone on number two, obviously. But here's the challenges, and this is, I'm not promoting my next course, and, but how do, you some, how do you place this crown in? The crown has to fit underneath this tissue. I mean, the abutment has to seep passively into that hex, internal hex, through the tissue. Then the same crown has to fit passively between these two contacts, and you expect the angle of the implant to be parallel when you're placing this with the two contacts, no way. Just no way, it's a pain in the biggest butt in the world. So when they came out with the screw down, you would have to continually screw and unscrew and you didn't know if you were getting a passive seating right here. This is how subgingival the implant was. So what I do is I call it a screw meant approach. It's got an occlusal access screw. And what I do is I try in the abutment as the first piece. So I know the abutment seats passively by screwing it in. If the screw doesn't go in passively, I know I have to re-impress. So I try the abutment in. Then I take the separate crown and I put it over the abutment. If I have to adjust the contacts, I adjust the contacts. Once the contacts are down, I take an x-ray to verify full seating. Then I check the occlusion. After everything's set, then what do I do? I put Teflon tape into the abutment that would be here. It's not part of this course. I put Teflon tape into the abutment. I cement the crown routinely with serum onto the abutment. I take the cement out just with a micro brush. The Teflon tape's protecting the abutment. And after five minutes, I unscrew this, clean off the cement underneath, and then I screw the whole thing into place. And that's called a screw mint approach. After I'm done, I'll seal this, whether with the composite or a glass ionomer. And that's how you get a passive seating and a well-made crown, implant crown. Lastly, failing implants. This is Jane. She's 88 years of age, has an upper denture, and she's got this. I don't want to take this out. So what do we do? We do a full thickness flap. I just debride the inflammatory tissue or my periodontist will. I just scoop it out, laser it out, whatever you want to do. And then what we do is we use a perioprotect tray for the lower teeth, only the lower teeth. And we use vibromycin long-term mixed with the peroxide with the goal to grow new bone. An advanced concept, but we keep the patient on long-term vibromycin gel and, per I mean, vibromycin syrup and peroxide gel. 
here's your seal. We put too much in, it's coming out, so we'll put a little less in, but we only really need the gel in that one area. This is Jane with her upper ugly denture that I did not make. And here's her gel with too much gel in, and we have to show her how much gel to put in. So here's my bottom line. This is a great, Perio Protect is an amazing system. It's got a philosophical approach that is very similar to mine. It's case by case. It works in totally our university dental prevention plan, which is our in-office dental plan. And this really builds your patients to keep coming back in for their dental hygiene recall. And that's where you really make your growth in a dental office and recall. And as promised at 45 minutes after Lisa, that is the part two of our approach to periodontal therapy. We'll open it up for questions. So Emily asks, what lasers do you like to use and what do you use them for? So Emily, right now, I have four hygienists. They're all laser certified. And openly, there are two lasers. There are three lasers in my, there are actually four, but let's talk perio. If, if you're a dentist and you want to just trough tissue, do some gingival uh, removal and things like that, the 810 laser, Picasso makes a great 810 laser. Love their laser. In my office right now, we use a 980 and a 940 laser. It's the wavelength that we prefer. It's just what we like to use. Um, and that's just... The lasers that we use are Serona's. BioLace makes a great 940, and the one we're using right now is from Ultradent. It's their new Gemini. It has an 810 and a 980 or a 940 wavelength, and it's a combination. So my hygienists you routinely use these, I would say, between four and six times a day. So I we like the 940 to 960 wavelength. We just do a 980 wavelength. Uh, it's just a little nicer, and it's targeted to certain microbes in the tissue and it creates less heat. Um, but for me and my operatories, I gotta have an 810 and I also love a CO2, but 810s are absolutely essential. Um, so let's go up, thank you for your questions. So let's go to the next one. You may have said it earlier, but how many years have you been using Perry Protecting Your Office? Carly, I've been using it almost three years now. I, I tested his catapult, uh, uh, it was underneath a catapult product review, and I've been using it three years. What lab fabricates your trays from Michael? Um, and that, Carly, by the way, I, I will say this. It's amazing what you will see when you start using this. I get emails from people who attend my lectures, and they're like, I love this. It's just a no-brainer in your practice, and it's a guaranteed $25,000 of profits every year, and you're not doing anything except making people better, healthier. So, Michael, Perio Protect offers, I think, five FDA-certified labs. I think I use Ohlendorf Labs out of St. Louis, but Perio Protect has a list of five labs who make them. You just take their online course, and Tanya and them will tell you which labs to use. So the question from Ninu is, what if your patients are non-compliant? Have you had any experiences with that? Are you kidding me? Of course I've had non-compliant patients. Are you kidding? It's like telling a patient to always follow your instructions. My father was in today. He's not compliant at 90. Um, and the issue is, is when they're not compliant, they get worse. They get bad again. They get lazy. And then you go back in and you tell them you're getting worse. So now we have to do surgery. We have to do this. And this doesn't prevent surgery. I, I, I will tell you, my surgeon loves this because after surgery, he doesn't want his patients to get worse again. So this doesn't replace surgery, but you have patients who've had surgery many times. So for non-compliant patients, I won't take impressions until I tell a patient, you got to wear this 10 minutes a day. If they don't want to wear this 10 minutes a day, then I won't even offer them Perio Protect, and we have those patients, trust me. So of course, you're going to have non-compliant patients, and you can tell. When they come into my office and they tell me they're using it, and you see their gums look puffy and bleeding, I just whisper in their ear, and I go, I know you're lying. And they look up at me and they go, I'm lying. They all, you know, there's no way because your tissues will look better. So non-compliance, that's up to the patient. I mean, you got to allow the patient some responsibility. Do you treat with PerioProtect from four millimeters and deeper pockets? So, Tom, in all honesty, 
it really depends on the patient. Four millimeter pockets, um, if they're just gingivitis, I really routinely put them on a power brush flossing regimen. If they don't get better, then I put them on Perio Protect, but routinely I can eliminate the majority of gingivitis with a power brush flossing and better, just better home care. Uh, we use AuraCare as a activated chlorine dioxide. Um, I really try to be minimal in my treatment to maximize my outcomes, but if they, they're not getting better and the fours are turning into fives or they just have a lot of bleeding fours um, and there's just a lot of crown and bridge or implants in their mouth, then I absolutely will put them on. It's case by case, but not for just basic gingivitis. Barbara asks, as the pockets decrease, do the trays need to be remade to keep the seal of the gaskets? Barbara, great, great freaking question. I love that. So here's what I can tell you. Routinely, I have made trays for patients. Oh, I've made trays over for patients when we have had substantial decreases in pocketing. So I've gone from eights to fives to fours, and I've only remade those trays twice. Where I remake trays, Barbara, openly, and I've learned this, is I would take the impressions, then do their growth scaling, then do their scaling and planing, and man, their tissue just shrunk up immediately. And then I would have to make them new trays. So that's why I recommend do a super gingival gross debridement, probe them, then take the impressions. Don't take the impressions over calculus. Then you'll be remaking a lot of trays. Case in point also, let's say, Barbara, all of a sudden you're doing a case and now you have to take out a tooth and now you have to put an implant in. We will remake a patient's Perio Protect tray at 100 or $125, which is our cost. I, I don't want to make any more profit. They've already paid the $375, so we will remake trays at cost. And the reason is these are our patients. It's the right thing to do. So we do do that. And, and then the question is, can you re-explain the gasket delineation? So, well, what, what the lab, what you do when you do this for my first course is you have to send full periodontal chartings. And so what happens is you send the full periodontal chartings to the lab, and the lab then starts to score away the stone on a stone model. That's why when I did a 3D model, they, they poured it up into a new impression and a new stone. They score the model based on the pocket. The gasket does not go into the pocket. It just, it grips the tissue tighter. So they know you're going to have a little shrinkage. So the scoring is based on the periodontal probing. And you must send a full mouth periodontal probing to the laboratory, along with the diagnosis, what you're doing, and good impressions that I showed you tonight. Is scaling with a laser the best way to perform the procedure? Well, let me just say this to you, Sylvia. I'm a huge laser guy, but I'm always learning. So I think lasers are amazing. But this weekend I was working with a colleague in Bloomington, Indiana, and he turned me on to EMSs and Euphrates glycine powder system. So he uses lasers, glycine, and he thinks the glycine is an amazing product for also removing bacteria in a pocket. And then this would be in conjunction with Perio Protect. So the glycine is made by, is distributed by Euphredi and EMS, and it's just another system like lasers that complement what we're doing with scaling and planing. So I, I'm looking into this, into that also, and I know ozone's involved too, but I absolutely swear by our laser treatments. We've had just phenomenal success. So Julie asks, what is your patient compliance? Julie, this is what I'll say. I'll say it's about 80%. I'll say two out of 10 patients drop off. They come in, their mouths get worse and they have to get back on it. But I'll say eight out of 10. The patients who have gone through multiple surgeries and are not getting better, the refractory patients, those are almost 100%. The geriatric patients fall off a little bit because they forget and they're not as motivated. So we really talk to their families and their geriatrics. But I'd say about eight out of 10, but I will absolutely say people who've had surgeries and don't want them again, people who love their fresh breath or want to have whiter teeth, they are our most compliant patients. Will there be any problems with Perio Protect and old restorations? And can the Perio Protect trays be used 
as soon as possible, finishing scaling and planing. Okay, old restorations, composites. This is a low dose peroxide. This is not like, you know, 15, 20, 33 percent. So 1.7 percent. We've not seen any issues, and the studies don't show any problems in long term use with composite restorations, just letting you know. Absolutely can be used after scaling and root planing, but I'll tell you it's even better with scaling and root planing. But Paul, if you've got somebody who's just finished scaling and root planing, nothing better than immediately getting them on this. So you would be taking the impressions while they're doing it if you haven't started it. And when they're finished, you get them right on it to maintain your success. How do you charge a patient in each visit on your for all five visits at one time? So Brian, let me just tell you this. So it's 375 for Perio Protect. We charge, I think, 273 per quad for scaling and planing and lasers. So your question is, is what if we have to go back in and do isolated scaling and planing to a patient who came in with sevens and eights or six sevens and eights, and their insurance only covers four quads? We tell them this ahead of time, and it's in their treatment plan. But if we can create better success for $273, I have to tell you, you look at all the all the treatment that we're doing, it's under $2,000 for the most part, which is the price of one and a half crowns. And we just tell the patient, this is what we're gonna have to do, and it's all treatment planned ahead of time. So if they come in with six, sevens, and eights, a lot of times we'll do two half mouth debridements and then one final localized in multiple areas. That's what we'll do. Can you provide a list of your go-to materials and instruments? Putty, crown remover, forceps, also provide future webinar dates. You're welcome, Robin. Um, Robin, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give you my email, and Lisa can send everybody out my email, but the best thing you can do is just email me, and then I'll send you all my contacts and even get you deals. Um, I'm happy to connect you with all the companies I work with and what I use. I only work with the companies I believe in. So my email is lou, L-O-U, at catapulteducation.com. So if you take care of, just send it to lou at catapulteducation.com. And, and you can email Lisa who registered you. She's my cohort here. I'm more than happy to get you all this stuff and update it. Because I know this is not just about Perio Protect, but so much more. Concentration of peroxides, 1.7%. Low dose, non-cancerous. Marshall did the studies in 1995, printed in JADA. And you've heard of this oral cancer thing with peroxide. Peroxide's made in your kidneys. Peroxide basically breaks down into oxygen and water. I don't know what's cancerous in oxygen and water. A lot of the carbamide peroxides break down into ammonia. That's why they stink. This is oxygen and water, just letting everybody know. This is covered by insurance. Emily, I love your questions. Emily, Perio Protect has this approved in Alabama. So all my patients who do not live in Alabama, which is the majority, I will tell you Perio Protect is continuing to work with, as I understand the organization, to get this more insurance covered. The reason I offer a dental plan, Emily, in my office, which I'm more than happy to send to everybody, is I hate insurance companies. I can't stand them. They're deniers. So I created my own in-office prevention plan. Patients pay basically 375 or whatever it is per year. It includes two hygiene visits, all my, all my uh, diagnostics, and they get 15% off everything I do, including Perio Protect. I have 2,000 active patients and 917, 917 are on our dental plan, and it's our university preventive plan. If you want that plan, email me. I'll send you the PDFs. It'll be another course down the road. But that's what we do. So we try to get our patients to buy into it. Okay. When you have a case that you have to change treatment mid-course, especially insurance case, how do you handle the extra costs with the patient insurance company? I just charge the patient 100 extra bucks if I have to make them a new tray. That's what I'm doing. And Tyler, that may not be answering your question, but I'm always thinking what's best for the patient, not their insurance company. Um, if I have to handle, if I have to change course and do more scaling and planings, I just try to do whatever I can within the reason of their insurance. And if I have to go beyond, the patient has to be fully informed. 
Do you start with Perio Protect before treatment with Arrestin? I don't use Arrestin anymore. I, I shouldn't say that. I'll use Arrestin on a patient who's not using Perio Protect, of course. We use the we use the Arrestin prescription now that you can get through their pharmacy. You order the Arrestin, it's like ten dollars per unit or whatever. It's like forty dollars deductible, and I place the Arrestin and I charge ten dollars per placement, and we store the Arrestin in our office. But honestly, I don't use much Arrestin anymore. I really, really believe in Perio Protect. It's amazing what you'll see. How do you how do you treat smokers who make no effort to quit as far as continuing treatment? Michael, those are the perfect patients for this. I got a ton of smokers. And I'm going to tell you, this really helps smokers out. The difference is I may tell the smokers, you got to wear this twice a day because your biofilm is a problem. Your nicotine in the biofilm is a problem. So oftentimes this helps remove the stain if they wear them twice a day. So I'm not going to change a smoker if they don't want to quit smoking, but I can protect them a lot better gingerly with Perio Protect. Is the Perio Protect 7% carbamide peroxide? It's a it's it's a 1.7% hydrogen peroxide. I believe, unless I'm off here. Recommendations on laser certification programs. Email me, I'll get them to you, David. My hygienists are all I'm I'm laser certified. My hygienists are. It's very reasonable. It's a great one or two day course, and I absolutely believe in it. Lasers today, you can pick them up for anywhere from three to six thousand dollars. We charge $50, $40 to $50 per laser treatment. So our routine hygiene patients for 4910s are, th are 179. We see one patient an hour. We're not a PPO-based practice, and we're fighting it all like all of you. That's what I got tonight, everybody. You can email us more questions. Lisa, thank you for hosting. I love this group. So many great questions. Thank you, Perio Protect for hosting me tonight. Lisa, thank you.